I dream of an Amazon region that fights for the rights of the poor, the indigenous population, and the least of our brothers and sisters, so that their voices can be heard and their dignity advanced. I dream of an Amazon region that can preserve its distinctive cultural heritage, where the beauty of our humanity shines through in so many varied ways. I dream of an Amazon region that can jealously preserve its overwhelming natural beauty and the superabundant life teeming in its rivers and forests. I dream of Christian communities that give generously and embody the church in the Amazon region so that the church can leave a new mark on the Amazon. What we have just heard are Pope Francis's four dreams for the Amazon. In Colombia, in the Caqueta region, farmer initiatives have been in place for more than 30 years to promote the safeguarding and protection of the Amazon. This is a region which has suffered from over-exploitation of oil and armed conflict. El Caquetá pertenece a la región amazónica del país. Caquetá belongs to the Amazonian region of the country and was significantly exploited as soon as it became colonized. This is how the exploitation of cedar wood, rubber, flowers, and all of their wealth began. Later, in about the 1950s to 60s, there was some colonization led by the national government after a period of conflict in the country, which intensified after the murder of Jorge Eliezer Gaetan. With the success of the government's planned colonization process, rather than considering the geographical characteristics of the Amazon region, it implemented a development model oriented towards livestock farming and the destruction of the jungle and mountains to establish pastures. As a result, the farmers received credits and subsidies to cut down the jungle, and that's how the process started to take shape. It was at this time that the settlers coming from various regions of the country began to establish a strong foothold in order to control the jungle so that they could open up the mountains and establish their lives here. The implementation of these government programs resulted not only in intensive livestock farming and excessive mining, but also a great deal of violence. Guerrillas were formed that resulted in many deaths and population displacements. Then in the 1980s, a new problem arose, coca cultivation. The arrival of drug traffickers has driven coke growers even deeper into the jungle, destroying previously pristine ecosystems. La región del, del Caquetá era una región muy productiva. Caquetá was a very productive region. There was a lot of food production, lots of bananas, corn, cassava and rice. Today, it is surprising to note that nothing more comes out of this region. Everything that we used to grow here in Caqueta now comes from the interior of the country. For me, it's very ironic because we could grow anything here. Pero, ¿qué pasó? ¿Por qué but what happened? Why is it no longer cultivated? Because it was easier for the farmer to take a backpack with one, two, and three kilos of coca and sell it. To face these challenges, Father Arnulfo Trujillo and Sister Lucia Loeza founded the Vicariate of the South in 1987 within the Archdiocese of Florencia, located at the gateway to the Amazon. The Vicariate is based on the following three objectives, a life of faith, a knowledge of the Amazon, and of human rights. 
This is achieved through integral human development, where the person is an integral being, a spiritual being, but also a social being, someone who has spiritual needs and material needs. So all the work done by the vicariate is meant to help the farmers to be fully formed so that they can give dignity to their life in the countryside, acquire dignity as people, defend their rights, protect the Amazon, and get together to make improvements and have a better future without having to leave the region. When I got here, I managed to buy this from my mother. It was a cattle pasture, and there was a plant called Panamanian, which is very difficult to eradicate. So I started fumigating it and spraying it with poison to kill the weed. I didn't know that this was causing damage to the earth, because locals always work like that. The process with the vicariate didn't come about by chance. For some time, I knew that they were helping the population. And when my husband bought this place, I said to him, let's go find José Abel and ask him to help us and put us in touch with an instructor to get some help as quickly as possible. He came and when he saw me doing this, he said, no, don't do that, you're damaging the earth. I replied that the locals always work like that, but again he said to me, no, the earth is poisoned and it takes about five years to recover. At that time I made friends with them, the process with the vicariate started, and they began to teach us how to work and sow. They explained about fertilizers, organic farming, and it was a great blessing because it's thanks to that that we have plants here today. We have been here for 25 years. We started with agricultural planning because it was like a desert here. There were no trees because they had been burned and the stream was also completely deforested. So we started planning on the advice of the vicariat to let the streams reforest by letting the native trees grow back. That's how we started the process here. So we already knew what we were going to do here, because everything was about livestock and pastures, and the stream was barren. So we started working by forming about six groups until we had sorted out the farm and everyone devoted as much attention to the wetlands as they did to the stream, leaving a wide open space. The final result is very beautiful. I started by working elsewhere, and then the situation became very difficult. I worked for a while in an oil company, some of our colleagues were killed there, so I came back. I quit. Once I got here, my mother and my father made it clear to me that I had to work on the farm because they were alone. My goal was to clear fell the hills, level the mountains in order to create intensive farming with pastures and grasslands. It was then that I began to get involved in the vicariate. They helped me to see that you don't have to expand as much to have a livestock farm. 
para tener una ganadería. Te voy a contar una anécdota, manera de chiste y, y de... Y de, y de, y de, de I will tell you a story. En 2014, when I went to visit Pope Francis as newly ordained bishop, I had prepared everything I wanted to say to him with a very eloquent and spiritual speech. When I told him, Holy Father, I am in Florencia, in La Caqueta, he interrupted me and said, Poor man, where were you sent? Maybe because of the painful and violent image of what was happening in the region. But today, after eight years, I can only give thanks because I was able to know the value of the Amazonian biome. I must confess that the more I learn about this particular church, the more I fall in love with it, especially the vicariate of the South, because they are the ones who gave us a history lesson on their work for the Amazon and the synodality that Pope Francis talks so much about. When we arrived at the farm, everything you see was unprotected. Animals roamed everywhere. It was just a pasture. There were no fences. What have we done? We put up a fence here and there to stop the animals from trampling this water spring. The trees have started to grow, the vegetation has started to grow, and today the water is crystal clear. We have clean water that is very drinkable because the animals no longer trample it. Animals are seed carriers. Here in this rehabilitation area, we find varieties of trees and plants that we have never seen before. There are other water resources that I don't really use because I don't need them for my house. Other people who are further away from my farm will benefit from this water. So I must not think only of myself and say, ah, because I'm not using the stream, let's make it overflow so that it dries up. But maybe someone else from the village will need it and many of the forest animals will need it. Nature needs water. Our dream is to create a comfortable place where people feel at home, at ease, and where there is no danger. A really pleasant place. We are old school. We don't have fancy things. But we have what is most important, love and family.
The emptier a person's heart is, the more he or she needs things to buy, own and consume, explains Pope Francis in his encyclical Laudato Si. The peasants of Caqueta attach great importance to the well-being of the family and maintaining good neighborly relations. The environmental crisis cannot be separated from the social crisis. This is why a community spirit of mutual aid is a key part of this ecological conversion. Around the family, the following unchanging principles are essential to build this type of farm. Soil, water, forests, and seeds. So, with these four ideas, with these four elements, we are ready to build an Amazonian farm with the family at its heart. The good life. What we have noticed is that we live very well. We are very rich. Not in economic terms, because in that sense we are very poor. But we live very well. We eat healthily. We live in peace in our house. We live in peace with nature. We live in peace with our neighbors. So to have a good life, you don't need money. You have a mindset that is oriented towards a good life. When we sit down to eat, even if it's just a small meal, we sit down to eat with peace of mind, focusing on the fact that we're going to enjoy good food. Living a good life means valuing what we do, our daily work, valuing this part of ourselves. Leading a good life also means sitting down every day to talk about what we're going to do, looking towards the future and all the conversations that we have here on a daily basis. To lead a good life is saying each evening, my God, thank you for this day that you have given us. A good life is saying in the morning, thank you, my God, because I can get up and contemplate a new day. It's all part of the good life. In the Amazon, women have not always been given a certain autonomy and responsibility. Sometimes they have lived in the shadow of their husbands when social or family decisions are taken. This is why this process of integral ecology is a means for women to regain their rightful place within the family and society. Ruby is involved in this empowerment of women as the chair of a community council in which each woman can share her thoughts, express herself, and learn to establish herself in society. In these women's circles, which are attracting more and more people, we organize these meetings to find out how these other women are doing and how we can help them to carry out projects. The goal is for these women to have both work and recreation and to have something to do so that they are not only at home but can have some time for themselves so that they can love each other so that each of us can love one another. As mothers, as wives, as farmers, as market gardeners, and everything that this involves, we do a wide variety of things. In my own experience, the fact of seeing so many needs pushes me to join in many different associations and committees because I see the need to influence, to bring my ideas, to make my way of looking at life better known. For me, life is about sharing with women folk, our sisters, it's about knowing the pain of others, but also learning about our own pain. 
que también conozcan nuestros dolores. Bien la, la guacamaya. Ah, oh, quedó el primer puesto. The farmers of Caqueta also want to recover some dignity, particularly by offering the farmer seeds of their ancestors at the marketplace. The farmer's market is important because it's a food system that we set up ourselves. It enables us to have food sovereignty because as farmers we need to produce independently from big agro-business. We have to impose our own market and fight because they want to impose everything on us. The multinationals are stifling us with so many chemicals. The Vicariate of the South organizes meetings so that farmers can share traditional agricultural practices. They also take the opportunity to exchange seeds. Thanks to the farmers' market and these exchanges, we can face up to all these threats. We don't want our families to find themselves stuck tomorrow and say that their parents did nothing to defend what belongs to them. This flower is in the park for the bees to pollinate. Follow me. Over here is a variety of plants. Many of them are medicinal. And there's another variety. This is the chote. Here in the plot is where the mosquitoes lay their eggs. And the guppy fish help us to prevent malaria. And over here is the Chinese potato. They look like faces. And here we see our potato growing. This Chinese potato is still small, and these will grow. They will grow on the vines that support them. Accompanying young people firstly means seeing them as the joyful presence of God in the church and in society. Pope Francis invites us to revolutionize the world through love and faith, to build new projects, to make dreams come true. But the driving force behind their actions is Jesus. He must be the source and the driving force that encourages them to live differently recognizing that we are unique, that we are fully capable of doing our best, of giving life and helping to nurture life. So our job as a team of religious persons, as a group of young people and children in the Southern Vicariat, is to support them on their path. We have to be with them from their early childhood, but also in their pre-adolescence and missionary adolescence, to see how they are developing in their projects, in their marriage, in their profession and in their vocation. I take the common house very seriously because it is more or less like our life. It's about taking care of the common house in many ways, helping others to be aware of the importance of taking care of the Amazon.
la casa como somos todos. The common house is all of us. If I take care of myself, you take care of me, we take care of each other. Not only I take care of myself, but we all do it together because helping others makes us better, so we can achieve what we set out to do. During the Synod on Amazonia, which took place in October 2019, a series of proposals were made to Pope Francis to open new ways for the Catholic Church in Amazonia. Everything that we find in the Amazon is part of our life, to live well. Everything is fundamental in the life of each Colombian, of every person. Even if you are in another country, you need the Amazon. So the appeal is for all of us to take care of the trees, to plant them, to take care of the land, of all this biodiversity. God is in nature, God is in every tree, in every plant, in the food I eat, in the fruit I eat. There is the presence of God. He gives me health, he gives me life. In the tree that protects me from the sun, in the earth on which I walk, in the water that I drink, there is where I feel the presence of God. We say that we are good believers, good Catholics, children of God. So let's start by respecting this creation that he has left us. This is how we do it. It's a way of teaching other communities and the family that this must be respected, cared for. So there are two things that need to be done at the same time. We need to give as much importance to prayer as to action. So Pope Francis invites us to act too. The Pope's dreams are the same as ours. Let's make them not just dreams, but reality. Psalm 104. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, we thank you for the abundance of life you give through your creation and for all the fruits of unity and dignity received by living in harmony with it. Grant that we may behave as custodians of your creation and not as consumers of the goods it brings us. Through the experience of the Vicariate of the South, may our churches commit themselves to promote this vision of an integral ecology at the service of nature and of people. La finca masonica requiere de transformaciones personales, familiares, sociales, culturales y agrarias. La finca masonica requiere de transformaciones personales, familiares, sociales, culturales y agrarias. En ella hay montes, agua y bosques, recursos naturales para compartir y conservar.